pop quiz hotshot. Grab your headphones and listen close. I'm about to play you two tones. One is Helix, the other is the amp that Helix is modeling. Both are going through the same IR. Which one sounds better? <laughs> Feel free to stop the video and go back and forth a few times. Got your answer? Well, here's the thing. I lied. They're both Helix. You just heard the exact same audio twice. Did you hear a difference? Okay, let's do the actual comparison now. I promise it's not the same audio twice this time. <laughs> What's the verdict? Okay, so I only half lied this time. They're both Helix, but the second one was one decibel louder. Did you find you had a preference? Welcome to the world of psychoacoustics. The point of all this is not that I'm a jerk who likes to play mind games. It's that our ears are fickle and easily fooled. The first time that I had that same tone twice trick pulled on me, I would have sworn up and down that there had been a difference and that one of the tones had clearly preferable attributes compared to the other. It showed me how much the way you expect something to sound can change the way it's perceived when you actually hear it. Now, given that we can trick ourselves into thinking that something sounds better than something else just with our dumb brains, how much easier is it when there's an actual difference? That was the point of the second example. Our ears, especially if they've been trained a bit, are really good at picking up on small differences in volume, just not necessarily at identifying them as such. If you've ever heard of Fletcher Munson curves, this is them in effect. The louder something is, the greater the perceived low and high end. Making something louder also makes us think that it's fuller and brighter. Conversely, you can also make a quiet sound seem louder by boosting its lows and highs. <coughs> but then bringing up the volume of that sound afterward generally doesn't yield great results. What this all leads to is that in A-B comparisons like we just did, we tend to prefer the louder sound. That's why it drives me absolutely crazy to see people give demos of some kind of audio processor where the before and after levels aren't matched. Compressors seem to be the worst offenders, but it can really be anything. If you're watching a demo and you see them do something like this, Okay, that actually sounds pretty good on its own, but let's try it with the Compressatron 3000. Whoa! Just bail out immediately because it's not worth your time. This is why in my last video, I made such a big deal about level matching the horizon drive at different settings after I pointed out that the attack knob affected the output level. Let's do another listening example. I'm sure that now you're expecting me to pull something, so I'm gonna be more transparent and I'll tell you that the only difference between these next two tones is an EQ move. <laughs> second tone sound noticeably darker to you? Well, that was actually the same tone from the beginning of the video, and I'm willing to bet that you didn't think it was particularly dark then. The first tone, however, had a high-end boost. There are two takeaways here. The first is that, in comparisons, in addition to preferring louder sounds, we also prefer brighter sounds. I'll come back to that later. The second is that our brains actually continuously adjust our perception of what we're hearing based on continuous exposure. You've definitely experienced this before. You go to a show, and the moment the band starts playing, it is overwhelmingly loud. But then by the second song, it's not really bothering you anymore. You may have just chalked it up to getting used to it, but there's a little more going on than that. You know how if you're in a dark room and you turn the light on, it takes a second for your eyes to adjust? And then after adjusting, if you turn the light back off, your eyes have to adjust again before you can see anything? Well, your brain does something similar for your ears and effectively turns down their sensitivity after being exposed to loud sounds for a while, making the level that you had considered normal before now seem quiet. By the way, the biomechanical mechanism by which this works is really interesting, and if you want to learn about it, I recommend this paper. I'll put a link in the description. But the point is that our ears get accustomed to the level of whatever we've been listening to. I don't know if a similar study exists for the effects of equalization, but it's pretty easy to test on yourself in the same way we just did in that last example. So I feel pretty confident saying that the same thing happens for frequency balance. If you spend a bunch of time listening to something that's really bright and then go back to something with a neutral frequency balance, that'll now sound dark to you. 
Now, knowing that our brains will automatically adjust for the level and frequency balance of sounds over time, let's go back to that first takeaway. We tend to prefer louder and brighter sounds. Do you see the problem? This is something you need to have in mind any time that you're dialing in or evaluating guitar tones or really working on anything with audio. You need to be asking yourself, is this better or is it just louder and or brighter? It's possible that a given tone needs to be louder and or brighter, but you need to evaluate that that's what you actually want in context and that you're not getting fooled into a vicious cycle of continuously boosting level and top end by your dumb lying ears. As an example, I was recently watching Ola England's video about Pod Go, and I got a little annoyed at the section where he compared the stock cabs with his personal IR. Underwhelming is the correct answer, I would say. But then if I load in my own, like... Now, Obviously, it's perfectly fine for him to prefer his IR, but if you've made it through this video up until now, you understand exactly why what he did there was not a fair comparison. But I feel like this is the kind of comparison a lot of people end up making, because a lot of commercial IRs come in much hotter than the Helix stock cabs by default. A true comparison would have sounded more like this. <laughs> Again, I'm not trying to make the case that the stock cab sounds better here, just that now you can actually evaluate them on a level playing field, instead of the IR getting a default advantage because it's so much louder. Level matching should be the first step in any process that involves the subjective judgment of audio. In my Horizon Gate video, you'll notice that I had the gate level actually boosted a touch. I found that using it had the overall effect of making the sound a little bit quieter, and I wanted to make sure that I compensated for that in the comparison. You'll also see me doing this with EQs, because boosting or cutting frequencies is, by definition, a level change if one restricted to a narrow band. In fact, some EQ plugins, like my beloved Pro-Q, actually offer the option to automatically adjust your output level based on the changes you make. Similarly, some limiter plugins, like FabFilters Pro-L or Isotope's Ozone Limiter, whose primary purpose is to change level, also offer automatic level matching. The developers of these tools are all too aware of how easy it is to trick your ears with this stuff and are trying to help their users overcome that. There are other ways to trick your ears, and there are probably exceptions to what I discussed here. But what I want you to take away from all this is that, as much as possible, you need to compare apples to apples when you're making decisions about audio. And once you start to account for things like level and EQ differences, you might be surprised at what actually stands out in those comparisons and what doesn't. Just don't let your ears lie to you. That's what I got. If you have questions or other thoughts, then leave them in the comments or hit me up on social media. I am at the Bishop Game on everything. I'm going to try to keep making these as long as I've got stuff to talk about and as long as you keep watching them. So like and subscribe or don't. You're an adult. You can make your own decisions.